British filmmakers that uh, aren't in, in, interested in making in telling stories about uh, the, their middle class. Yes. Uh, as a uh, but you know as your movie does. Yeah. Why do you think that is? Um. Well, I don't know. We all tend to be middle class, and I suppose perhaps we find that perhaps we don't like our own class, or we're embarrassed by it, or perhaps we find the working classes and the upper classes more exotic. Mm-hmm. I'm very aware of it. I mean, it's very noticeable. The French make films about the middle classes. No. Perhaps the actors feel uncomfortable. Uh, and this is based on a very popular uh, comic strip. Yeah. Uh, how did you get involved with that? How did how did you become aware of this property? I was sent the script. Mm-hmm. But before that, I'd read the I'd read the comic mm-hmm. on when it was on in the newspapers, and I and indeed I know the I've known the graphic artist for you know forty years. Oh really? Hmm. And are you a filmmaker or? or do you distinguish between, uh, you know, when when you saw this, you know, in the papers, and you saw this? The, I never you, thought it would make a film until I read a script. Mm-hmm. I just thought, what a brilliant idea! But it wasn't my idea. And uh, have you have you gotten any indication of her feelings on the finished product? Posey, she seems yeah. very pleased with it. Adaptation of comic strips slash yeah. graphic novels are kind of the the in vogue thing yes. right now. Yes. Have you? Uh, have you followed? Uh, I've only the read one graphic novel in my life, okay. which is this one. But I've begun to I've begun to learn about this whole world, mm-hmm. and when I go home, I'll read. I'll try read some film. You know, obviously, film is a visual medium. Graphic novels are a visual medium. Yeah, you know, it seems that they seem to, while they're not the same visual. I've come medium, to see that what. Posey Simmons does is exactly what I do. What was your challenge? What, what was the biggest challenge with this script as a director? Oh, you you know, to keep the spirit up. Mm-hmm. To keep people, you know, keep people's spirits up. Not to let it get, you know. Mm-hmm. Always with comedy, you need it to be like a souffle, to keep the souffle up and in the air. Well, how about, the, I'm curious about this. When, with the... You know, the tone of this story is very delicate, from, yeah. d- from dramatic to kind of yeah. light, whimsy, and, and, and ricocheting back and forth. Yeah. And so that tone is very important in, you know, yes. to the success of the story. And so I'm curious, as a filmmaker, when you're in the process of, of shooting, when do you, be- are you, do you become aware in the middle of filming that it's clicking, or is it not until the editing room that... It well, starts you to can, come together. No, you, you don't you don't leave the floor unless it's right, really. I mean, you go on shooting a scene until you've got it right. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess in the cutting room you discover if your judgment was correct. But I could always tell when the scenes were where what I thought they should be. Was there a rehearsal process on this? No, not really. I mean, I, the, these. I mean, I think the people are very, very well cast, mm-hmm. which means there's not a great deal to rehearse. Do you, are you not a big proponent of the rehearsal? No, I prefer it to be more sort of spontaneous. I like it to come from the actors, and I like to, to I like to be able to see what they're doing. And on, but on the same hand, you're also you're not a uh, two, three takes and out kind of filmmaker. Is that correct? You're... I would be if I was braver. <laughs> I can hear when something is right. Right. I really direct with my ear as much as my eye. And uh, one of one of the one of your collaborators in, in this is the great composer Alexandre Desplat. He's what? Uh, you know Benjamin Button and many other yeah. scores. And uh, what was that collaboration like? He's a brilliant man, mm-hmm. and he reads films in a very very clever way. He's, he's a it's a joy to do. Him. What has been your uh, most surprising and most I guess maybe rewarding? Of this kind of, of screening the the finished the finished film for people. Well, so far it's been very very gratifying. You just see the pleasure it gives people. You know, I'm when I grew up, films were both enjoyable and intelligent, <laughs> and there wasn't this sort of separation that takes place. Right. So I suppose what I'm trying to do is to make a film that is like you know the films that I grew up with. Right, right. You know, when you went to see a Billy Wilder film, you didn't say, this is done commercially. It was just generally extremely enjoyable and clearly made by men of high intelligence. One of the directors you, you worked under early on was uh, Lindsay Anderson. Yeah. And 
what did what did you gain from from working with you know those those early giants of the British uh, 60s cinema? Well, you learn a lot about life, really. Mm-hmm. I mean, they were highly intelligent. You know, you just you you learned how to think, really, and how to live. I think more than anything else, they're sort of they're sort of inspiring in their lives. You work primarily a lot of times in your in your home country and yeah. telling stories about the middle class. But every now and then you do you do turn your eye to uh to American based stories. Yeah. Really, yeah. Like Rifters and, yeah. and 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 Hero in particular. And you've done this a few times. I'm, I'm yeah. curious on what is it about, I guess, you know, America as kind of generic as that may sound that you, know, that I've you find up, interesting. I've, I've grown up seeing American films, reading American books. Yes. It would be a miracle if I wasn't interested in American things. Right. I mean, I can see that when I, whenever I've made a film here, I've used a sort of different bit of my brain. And when you made, like, a movie, when you, when you do a grifter or a hero, are you a... Uh, at all aware or uh, consciously aware that, you know, particularly, in the, you know, like in the grifters, that you're working in kind of the, you know, American film noir tradition? And I remember I always used, to, in the cutting room, I used to say, is this an American film or a European film? Of course, the mm-hmm. American film noir tradition largely came from Europeans. And the same thing with Hero, that was obviously in the Frank Capra screwball tradition. Yes, that's right. And was it fun kind of working in that kind of, working within yes. the mechanics of that kind of storytelling? Yes, and I could see that the films were largely influenced by the American cinema. Yes, right. absolutely. Uh, your, your last big hit here uh, from three years ago is the, was the, the Queen. Yes. It was spectacular, and Helen yeah. Mirren got, got an Oscar. Yeah. And so I'm curious about, you know, because that film is very smart, and obviously because of you and and screenwriter Peter Morgan about uh, the British, uh, present-day British uh, monarch system. Yeah. Kind of this clashing with yes. kind of 21st century media culture. Yeah, yeah. And I'm curious of what you, if, you know, what you think of, if uh, anything, if there have been any new developments in that kind of clash in the la- since you've made that film. You know, it was the only time in my life that the Queen was really criticised. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I mean, that, first of all, that's a sort of tribute to her, I suppose. I, I mean, I don't think... Um, I don't think there'll be a revolution in my lifetime. Are you wary of that, or are you kind of hoping that never happens? Well, most of my life has been spent wanting change, but I don't think there will be any change. You know, it's quite odd being a subject and not a citizen. Okay. What are you, uh, what are you working on now? I may make a film in Las Vegas in the spring. Oh, really? Hmm. Wow. I'm a, a sports foot gambler. Have you been to Vegas before? I was there three weeks ago. And what do you think of that obviously very kind of American city? Well, normally, the only times I've been before, I've gone as a sort of tourist. Right. And this time, I had a sort of inside pass because I was with people who live there and work there. And it was, I mean, I found it very, very interesting. Before I let you go, I got to ask about one of my one of my all time favorite films of the eighties. Yeah. That's uh, "Prick Up Your Ears." Yep. And I'm I'm just curious, any kind of you know, it's almost coming up on twenty five years of that film. Uh, Good God, yes, you're absolutely right. And you know, now you know everyone kind of takes Gary Oldman and Alfred Molina as a, as a given. Everyone now knows yeah. him, and, and 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 I'm 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 convinced there's still a ton of people who don't even know this film. Yes, uh, and I, I, hopefully, if they hear this, they'll they'll go out and rent it. Yeah, but I'm curious. What do you, what do you remember most? Looking back at that film, what do you remember most of that of that experience of working with those two actors? You know, before well, they, were both they became... very very good. Yeah, Gary looked like Joe Orton. Fred looked less like um, Halliwell, but right. but they were both wonderful, and I'm not surprised that both of them. I mean, they were really good. You know, I was just lucky. I was the person who took them into a film that uh, they were going to be successful. They were very highly regarded as young actors. That story of those two guys and their kind of doomed relationship yeah. really has, still kind of has a, a potency and resonance. Uh, yes, I'm Probably even that. more now than maybe someone yeah. thought of then. Would you, 
Yeah, mm-hmm. well, I remember the re- I remember the real relationship. I remember the, the you know the killing and um, the bodies being found. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if it re- I don't know if it resonates now. 